and the messaging. So once once we have database per service, we you know thinking them is the uh, our next problem that we're going to work towards. Uh, so let's once quickly think again. We solved our order customer together, one microservice. We split them in, uh, it was one monolithic architecture and it had one database. We split it into two microservices with a database per service. Now we know we are, we are having sync issues. So we are going to have a messaging infrastructure. So when I have messaging infrastructure, we will have some uh, person who publishes an event and some person who consumes it. Okay, both of them will subscribe to messaging. Now that background, I don't have to give you all of you would have worked on some form of messaging, uh, JMS or some MQ series or possibly even Kafka, possibly even Rabbit MQ. So that is the uh, thing that in once we have a, once our organization decides of its messaging infrastructure, uh, which might be like maybe Kafka or Rab Kafka is very popular. Okay, so um, you Kafka is a topic by itself, platform by itself. Okay, high speed messaging most preferred by all organizations. Rabbit MQ is fine when you are when you're okay with when you don't have very high volume and you are um, you don't require some complete platform in terms of um, uh, saying that it is um, uh, exhaustively and completely updated always. So Rabbit MQ will be fine for you solve uh, uh, the purpose. Okay, it's it's also quite efficient, but it will not scale up to possibly beyond some uh, that data you have to find out. But it'll be like when you when you're talking about business, also Rabbit MQ will be fine. But some organizations might have beyond beyond uh, that requirement as well. So that is when you have to uh, you have to do your research. You have to find out that you have to bring it up as the decision maker, as the architect, as the engineer who is given the task. Research on that and find out that this this at this point, I mean, for if you give me so many nodes of uh, uh, whatever Rabbit MQ, I can serve so many requests, and this is the performance of it. So that is what is the, that is what will decide that what is or you can use the existing data. Somebody would have done it. You can use them. Uh, that we would decide what are the messaging infrastructure that you need to use. So when we so the problem that we just mentioned in singing problem, mostly it will be that when customer is updated, the order microservice needs to be notified because that is going to be the important order is going to uh, deal with the uh, finances, the uh, the payment and all those kind of things using the customer's data. Now, if customer's address is updated, customer's transaction limit is updated, uh, some uh, status updated, customer has, has been very inactive due to some reasons. So under all these circumstances, um, it will even be published by customer microservice to the messaging infrastructure and be consumed by order microservice. Okay. Um, actually, we had gone through this question earlier, and I remember that time people asking very good questions that what will we do if the messaging infrastructure goes down? Okay. I think two, three of you had asked the question. Um, and then I told you one more, one more one more criteria for setting messaging infrastructure is that um anything or when you're building it you see the feature where it persists the message onto the file system says say that it goes down like it it goes completely down at that time i need some backing for it whether it's a file system or whether it's a database or its own some other mechanism it is using beyond this it will decide that when it comes back up it will start from the point where it had uh, failed okay means every message every message will be honored we will not have any lost messages okay but still Still, I, I'm sure there are, there's a problem of lost messages as well, okay? And um, that you have to read about by yourself, okay? But that'll be very minute. It'll not be like, it's not like too much. Um, it's not, at least I'm sure it, if your scale is not very high, if you're talking a few thousands and um, possibly lags also, it'll not lead to any lost messages. Um, but it does exist the problem of lost messages, okay? Um, because the reliability of those persistent uh, queues might not be accurate or the Anyways, there are different problems. That is a different topic. You can go on researching about it. Okay. But then before the or it'll be for the reason, it'll be for the reason that you won't scale too much higher. You have a lot of scalability requirements. That is when you have to uh, do your testing around these POCs and make sure that it is um it is meeting your requirements. Okay. But in normal circumstances, this particular diagram here, you put a uh, whatever technology name to each of the things there. Let's say MySQL, Spring Boot. Uh, infrastructure is there by Spring Cloud, Netflix, Messaging, Rabbit MQ. There's a publish, you publish it, you consume it, and that's it. You will be good to go. So when you consume that, uh, your uh, your service will uh, make sure that it's going to 
uh, make sure that uh, it updates it in the order database, and then we will not have a uh, inconsistent state. Okay, so you you have to remember during this time, um, if there is the business critical uh, data, okay, like I'm, like I told you, uh, payments are one thing, okay, and possibly when somebody's order, you must have must have seen big basket that when we order something. Okay, it, it, even if it's microservice or not a microservice, but in this case, we'll talk about microservice. When you order something, it might be available to us when we are ordering it and it immediately disappears from our basket when you try to confirm the order. So when it's correctly designed, when it's correctly built, uh, the final, like when you're going for critical um, kind of operations, which is to commit the order or make the payment, uh, those kind of, at that point, you make sure in whatever way you decide, okay, um, through strategies to make sure that you have the most relevant data available with you. Okay. And sometimes things go beyond, like it, the reconciliation happens even beyond your orders and payments. Okay. Because what happens sometimes they say that it might be because it's not available really physically in stock or the item was not correctly, it was not correctly, uh, what do you say, synchronized. So that time they say it was not available, the item. So you'll not be able to uh, deliver it to you. Okay. Or they might immediately say after the, uh, submitting the order that we corrected your order because it is not available in stock. So those are things like, uh, I mean, uh, whether you use retail use cases, e-commerce use cases, in such scenarios, uh, the topping of messaging, um, the failover of messaging, pers uh, the persistence of them, and then deciding the final level granular granularity, like final granularity, like at granular level, how you're going to do the synchronization is what you have to, you have to keep improving, keep uh, bettering, keep understanding on your business use case, and then implement it, okay, uh, in your absolutely like an implementation. Um, that will be your choice, your understanding of your existing uh, uses correctly, and then testing, making sure the testing is done correctly uh, so that everything is handled, okay, in the, in the right way. So that is database per service uh, data management pattern, okay. Um, if we have to go back to the earlier slide, you will see here, Absolutely, as per definition, as per theory, what, what they say is that there will be private tables per service, schema per service, and database server per service. Okay. Now, which means, see, till now, whatever I was telling you in terms of database uh, server per service, okay, server, that is two different database servers are the ones which actually uh, solve the problem correctly. Okay. But as per the theory, they say schema per service or private tables per service also falls under this category. Let's say in a given um, in a given database, based on semantics or database, let's say MySQL or Oracle or whatever you're using, whether it is um, uh, PostgreSQL or whatever PostgreSQL and whatever you're using, in those circumstances, there'll be the way, like in MySQL, uh, uh, the schema, I mean, uh, definition of database schema is very different in MySQL and Oracle, okay? that is the technical English or technical definition part of it. But in, in terms of here, the definition schema, they are saying is the, like in Oracle, what we said, uh, schema is the set of tables, right? Like a database, not a physical database per se, but a schema for a given application. So they might, here they are saying that we create one schema per service. That will also allow us to, <coughs> by managing it differently, the different schemas, uh, we can definitely provide some scalability. Uh, solve one part of the uh, problem that uh, data is handled independently, okay? Uh, but whenever we, I mean, if you have talk about scale, scalability, complete scalability, we'll definitely be using database per, database server per service, okay? That is the most common thing. So that is the one which will allow you to scale very, very higher uh, levels, okay? Higher uh, requirements when they are there. Schema per service, if you do your testing, you might find that when there are two different schemas, they have, might they, they might have their own, Correction or mechanisms, they might have their own uh, possibly tuning done in terms of semantics or database. It still gives you some better performance than a shared database. That's the schema per service is there. And then the, and the other one is a private tables per service. Rather than creating the complete schema, just create the uh, create the those tables, okay, like customer tables, uh, and then create different set of tables for the um, what do you say um, order management, okay. Uh, do not do not uh, let it join via directly. Like do through, do not make joins between them. Okay, you maintain them independently, and then you try a different some data sync mechanism. We create some table for data sync, 
from where you will where you will retrieve the uh, view data. Okay, so those kind of I mean those kind of strategies. Okay, will help you solve part of the problem. That is independent development, um, scalability. Highest will be for database server per service and schema per service and private per service is only because the implementation of the database allows us to. Uh, it it makes sure that there will be some. I mean the semantics of the database, whatever way it's implemented, it it is the one which decides that yes, uh, if you do a test, we find that even by having private tables per service, obviously because joints are not there, it improves the performance uh, to some extent. So such kind of scenarios, such kind of things you can. Uh, I mean, because this is, a, this is the actual theory for it. Uh, you need to know it that this is also called as database per service. So there's a link given there. Please read uh, from uh, uh, that link as well. Okay. Uh, and then you will be able to understand it more better. Um, okay. Shared database uh, service. 